Yo, what's up, YouTube? It's your boy Gunflex and Texan. Back once again after being away for a while. Um, I hope everybody had a, had a happy Fourth, happy Independence Day, happy. Hope everybody was safe, and I hope everybody enjoyed it. But today, uh, I want to talk to all of you about um, your subtensions on your reticle, whatever reticle. You, you may have um there's all all kinds of out there from nikon to uh vortex to bushnell and whatever have you but um, a lot of people get rifle scopes and don't know how to uh calculate with the sub tensions that are on their reticle uh for whatever reason and today i'm gonna attempt to maybe explain to some people that, that don't know about it um about the sub tensions on your reticle um now they do i know some of these uh, companies have um pdfs that you can download and it it explains in the manual um how to read the sub tensions but you know some people some people just don't get it and i'm going to attempt to explain it today on a um, from the Vortex Diamondback tactical standpoint, and maybe you can understand better. And this is just for the maybe the um, beginners that are just now getting into shooting and don't know how to read the sub tensions or the lines, if you may, on their their scope. So I'm gonna turn the camera around and. Um, we're going to get right into it all right now this was downloaded from the uh vortex diamondback tactical manual so i'll explain it from this standpoint only uh, starting with the numbers here you see the number 30 goes from this line all the way down to this line what that means is that there is uh, 30 minutes of angle from this line to this line right here. Okay, you have 30 minutes of angle to adjust for holdover. Now, you may say 30 minutes of angle, I don't know what the hell that is. And that's fine, you know, but today is not the explanation of what a minute of angle is. Uh, it's just a 360 degree circle is out is the best way I'll explain it today but if you go down like I said you have 30 minutes of angle from this line all the way down to the top of this uh, dark post right here now if you see these uh, numbers right here if you look at right here you'll see some of these lines are bigger than the other ones what this is saying right here is that from the bigger line to the next biggest line is 4 MOA okay it's 4 MOA and if you come down here over here I'm sorry from this line to the next line is 2 MOA all, all of these lines whether you're doing windage or elevation is in uh, 2 MOA so as you come down it starts to make sense so this line right here will be 2 MOA the next line will be 4 MOA, 6 MOA, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, all the way down to 30. And if you look at it, like it says, the big lines are 4 MOA, you'll see 4, 8. Okay, now you might say, okay, well, how does that help me knowing what each line represents as far as MOA, 2 MOA? Well, if you know that, just say for instance, uh, sorry for the faulty camera work, I'm doing it by myself. I'm doing the best I can. If you know that one MOA at 100 yards equals approximately 1.05 inches, okay? Or you can just make it easier on yourself and say, 
one MOA at 100 yards <clears throat> equals one inch. So one inch at 100 yards. Well, if you come up here and you zero your rifle in the center crosshairs at 100 yards, okay? That's one MOA right there, one inch at 100 yards. If you'll come down, like it says, each one of these lines represents two MOA. Well, if you're aiming at 200 yards, that's two MOA, okay? Two MOA. And three is gonna be somewhere in between the two and the four because like we said, the big line represents uh, four MOA increments, four, eight. So this will be four MOA, 400 yards, and in between here, somewhere will be your 300 yard marker, okay? That's the best way I can explain that, okay? Now, if you come over here to this big dark line over here and you see 1.7 inches, what this is saying is that this this whole dark line right here from top to bottom is 1.7 inches and it's going to cover up 1.7 inches of your target when you're looking down range, okay? That's what that means. Now, keep in mind, in order for these subtensions to be accurate, you're going to have to use your um, scope on the highest level, whether your highest level is 9, 12, 16, 18, whatever the case may be. You have to use it on the highest level for these subtensions to be accurate, okay? Now, what this is saying right here, 0.15 inches, is that this line, this whole line right here, is 0.15 inches in diameter and it's going to cover up 0.15 inches of your target when you're looking down range. Same for this uh, measurement here, 0.7 inches for the smaller line throughout the reticle. It's going, to, it's going to cover 0.7 inches of your target when you're looking down range. Same thing for the bigger lines which represent uh, 4 MOA is going to be 1.5 inches covering up your target okay now the same thing from side to side which is your windage your uh, elevation has 30 30 minutes of angle your windage have has 18 minutes of angle from the middle of the crosshair to the top of the dark line right here so as you can see if you count Two MOA, four. Four is the big line. Six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, and eighteen MOA. Okay. Now, how that correlates to uh, windage adjustment, I just guesstimate that at five, <clears throat> excuse me, at um, five miles per hour, you'll hold somewhere in between the two MOA and the four MOA for five miles per hour. That's how I always guesstimate it, and I've never been wrong on that so far. As it gets stretched out to this, you can figure it out. But that's my way of explaining the MOA as far as how to uh, engage it on your, your reticle. All right, sorry about that, y'all, but that was my way of uh, trying to explain maybe to the new shooters uh, how to use the sub tensions on on uh, the reticle. So, like I said, if I missed anything, please correct me down in the comments below. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Once again, this is your boy Gunflex and Texan signing off. Y'all be easy. Peace.